I'm Gabo Guinabert. I'm a software delivery engineer in the Bot Farmer team. I'm based in New York City, and I'm going to be showing how to use adaptive cards and templates uh, with uh, a simple bot that I wrote. First, I'm going to show you what we did in the Bot Framework. I worked in the SDK team for Bot Framework, right? And every once in a while, we have these internal hackathons where we try out new things. So this is a bot that I actually built um, as a test for uh, testing our capabilities in Teams. It's all open source in case you want to play with the, the, the code later on. Uh, let me show you first what the bot does, and then I'm just, just going to go behind the scenes and show you how adaptive cards and templates are being used, right? So this bot is a bot that a program manager came out with the idea of a write that down bot, right? So we, we wanted to integrate that with Teams, right? And here I'm looking at this meeting, right? And I let's say I see a question here that I need to follow up uh, later on, right? So we are implementing a message in action, a message in extension here. So I can just select that guy and say, add to my notes. So what the bot is actually doing here, right, is going to bot framework, returning an adaptive card, and I'm using that adaptive card to render this form that the user is actually going to be um, filling up, right? So I'm just going to say action one. I can choose private share, right, and here it captures the original message and it saves that into my private notes, right? Later on, I can go and talk to my bot privately, right, and I can say uh show my notes right and uh the bot is going to respond and then if i scroll up i think i should have the action one here right and i get a link to the original message right and takes me to the message in context in the original place where the conversation happened so what i'm doing here is i'm combining two different paradigms right so basically I have an adaptive card that allows me to enter the data. If you were doing do, doing this as a conventional bot, you would say, I want to take a note, and what's the title of the note, and what's the body of the note, and then you would have a back and forth. You can see here, I'm in the middle of a meeting. I'm not disrupting the flow. I'm using a, a messaging extension to pop up a note, take a note to self, right, and just have that in my private storage. Right now, the, the, the storage is fake because this is just a hack project. And then I can use the conversational AI to talk privately one-on-one -on -one with the bot and say, hey, show me my cards. And this is actually rendering a list of all the notes I captured. There's a lot of um, crazy test data there, but basically it allows me to, to do that in context. I can even go further, right? I can go to talk to Matt and say, hey, someone asked a question here. So I can use the, the message and extension and search for an action that I have captured here, click on it, right? And then send Matt a link to that action, right? And Matt gets that and he can also go click on the adaptive card and go to the conversation right in context and, and see exactly what happened there and he can act on it, right? So that's pretty much basically the idea or the general flow of, um, of this, right? Any questions so far? I mean, feel free to interrupt or I'm not checking the chat window except for, for this, but uh, let me know, uh, Matt or Dana, just uh, jump in if uh, anything comes up there. So let me show you how this was done, right? So I have uh, uh, a bot written. Yeah, I think uh, Power Apps, you can do integration with Power Apps too, but uh, I, I just use Bot Framework here uh, on the, the, the adaptive cards uh, for this. So let me show you exactly what, what this bot is doing, right, and how the things look like in code. First of all, as Matt was showing earlier, right, so I have the, the designer for cards. I have, uh, I go to the designer window. This is the, the new card template. Right, so when I create a new card, I have the test bot, the title. I can bind to specific fields like title, note body, private or shared, right? And I have the design of my card, and I also have the data model for the card. And this is super useful because uh, basically sometimes you would have me as a developer, right? I do care about the data that I'm going to be persistent, so I have the JSON schema of the data I'm going to capture. Then I can work with someone in UX that actually defines what the card is going to look like, right? 
And for example, if I were the, the car that I show when I said like, show me my items or show me my notes, right? This is the card and here's the data, which is actually a collection of fake notes, but I can go in preview mode, right? And you see that it's actually rendering the card. It's actually rendering a collection of that card, right? So I have a single card, I have a data bound to an array and I share that and I have like uh, Matt was showing earlier, right? I can even, let me just go back to preview mode. So if it's a share node, I want one icon. I a private node, I want a different icon. So I have all this conditional logic. So as a developer, I don't need to go and, and write uh, a lot of um, uh, if code in there because uh, the person that is in charge of the UX or handling the, the look and feel of my card, right? Is actually gonna take care of that. Then I can data bind, these to to my notes, so this actually uh, I'm scoping that to a collection. So this is an array containing notes, right? And then within each node, I just repeat uh, the text block for the images of what I want to show there. Basically, also I can I can turn on visibility, right? So you see some notes have linked to messages, some notes don't have linked to messages. So I can hide and show elements here using some conditional logic in the iteration, right? So this is super cool because if I show you how would I have done this with code, uh, let me show you re this a little bit. And so, for example, if I would have had to to render a list of nodes using the adaptive card language model, right, object model, basically what I would need to do is like first hydrate an adaptive card, which I I, I can actually instantiate that from JSON. But then when I want, I want to display the notes, what I'm going to have to do is find an element called notes into, into that card, then create the image element, then create a column, then add the image, then the title, then decide if I'm going to show the message link URL. So all this code right, um, that I had to write before in C Sharp and using the object model, right, gets simplified by just simply let me show you the easy way of doing this, right? So I have the template of the data. So I do grab that adaptive card template here and I embed that as an embedded resource in my solution. Then I load that uh, template. Then I have a list of notes object, right? That I just serialize that as JSON. And then I simply do card template expand notes. And that's just gonna hydrate the, the adaptive card and just boom. It's gonna render on the screen that list. And as a developer, I just need to write this. And if someone else changes their mind later, later on, and they wanna change the look and feel of the adaptive card or do something different, they just need to work on the designer, send me the new JSON. I can just put that as a resource in my app and boom, everything is working. And I don't need to touch this logic anymore. And I don't need, I don't need to deal with columns, containers, all this craziness and find elements by ID and things like that. So, which I think is, is pretty cool. By the same way, if you see an example of uh, how would I render the initial nodes, right? So remember when I right click and say capture a node, basically same thing, right? So I have a node template. That is the one I showed you in the designer earlier on. I can data bind that to a node instance. I can, I can initialize that node instance and, and just create that. And when the user clicks on submit, right? So when the, they submit the card. What I just need to do is like take that data payload that comes back from the adaptive card. I can map that to my node JSON object. I grab that and I put into my storage. So the coding becomes way simpler, right? And, uh, and I can write better bots, right? So that's it. Any, any yeah. questions or any comments? Well, I mean, that's really powerful, right? Like you literally went from like hundreds of lines of codes to like one function by yep. the end of this. Mm -hmm. It's just, uh, yeah, that's, that's amazing. And the, the, the biggest thing on that, you know, I, I wrote that object model SDK. That was one of my first kind of contributions when we were just seeing if this adaptive card stuff even makes sense. So that was like some of the first code that we ever wrote. And, you know, you can write it and it's a little bit clunky and a little cumbersome. But the major problem then is now it's in code. It can never go back into the designer. You can never really see what this looks like. And it's a really 
poor, you know, you revisit this code six months from now and you can't really remember what the cart looked like. It's kind of a, a, a bummer from an inner dev loop experience. Yeah. So I really like that. And the other thing I'll just mention, because I don't know if it's super obvious, is you can use templating today. Um, you can use it in a Teams bot. You can use it like templating happens server side. So the template gets bound to the data and then a fully hydrated, if you will, adaptive card gets sent to Teams. Teams has no idea you use templating. Templating was just a developer feature. So you, you can you can get started with it today. And in fact, that's what Gabo did and, and released this. Hey, a couple of questions on that. Um, Alexander asked if for the preview of adaptive cards in Teams, is it necessary to use a hero card and not the adaptive, or is that still the case, or will that change? So, yeah, I think uh, I couldn't get, uh, that's something I need to uh, get back to you on that. I couldn't get the adaptive card to render. That's why in my sample, I'm just sending the card directly. I think it should be oh. possible, but I have something wrong. In Are code. you talking about in the messaging extension? Yeah, no, well, so oh. ideally, I think if I understand the question, it's like uh, when I'm in the in the message here, right? So if I just want to, if I want to, if I want to render a card in this section and preview it before I send it back at you, right? I mean, if that's actually an adaptive card. So far, I'm using a hero card for that, but uh, I, I'm not sure if that's possible. So if I select an action here, right, and that goes out, oh doesn't work on Teams because it's not, my bot is private and it's not added here, mm -hmm. but it doesn't render in the text message. But um, I, I'm not 100% sure about that. Uh, yeah, my somewhat limited understanding of it is that that should be a full adaptive card in the input box, but in the search list when you're searching for them, I think those have to be thumbnail cards. Yeah. Mm -hmm.